In this video, I'm going to show you four secret hacks that you can apply when you're doing your extra places when you're doing your match betting. So these four hacks that I'm going to include within this video will allow you to minimise your qualifying losses whilst maximising your potential profit if a horse that you're getting on lands within an extra place. Now you may find a few of these hacks to be basic common sense and something that you already knew beforehand, but what you may also find is that there might be a little bit of value contained within this video which you didn't already know. So all I'm asking is if you do find this video useful and it does help you out in any way, please do tap the like button, it does mean a lot and it does help my channel out absolutely massively. So with that being said, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna jump over to the computer screen and dive right into hack number one. So in this first hack, I'm gonna show you a little trick which will help cool your nerves down when you're trying to get on extra places when you're match betting. Now as you probably know, the best opportunities with extra places come in the last couple of minutes before the scheduled start time of a race. So you can see in the race that I've got up here, this race is scheduled to start at five past four. Now in the last few minutes, this is gonna be where you're occupied with your extra places. So you're placing your back bet with the bookmaker, you're placing your win lay bet on the exchange, and you're also placing your place lay bet on the exchange. Now what can be really stressful Number one, the odds are going to be flying around all over the place. And number two, you've obviously got to bear in mind that you can't afford to be taking your bets in play. So when you go in play, you've got to have a back bet matched, the bookmaker of course, you've got to have your win lay bet matched and your place lay bet matched. So obviously you've got to be focused on getting these bets matched before the race goes in play. Now if you're new to horse racing, the time specified as the start time, so in my case here it's five past four, isn't always actually the case. You know, this is the scheduled start time. It doesn't mean that exactly five past four, all these horses start racing. It's not like football where all the matches start at 3 p.m. every Saturday. That's just the scheduled start time. Sometimes it can go a few minutes after the scheduled start time before the race actually starts. So what you can do is you can go over to Betfur's website and find the race in question which is this race here, this five past four race. Click on it and you can actually click this button in the top right hand corner. Now once you click that button, that basically brings up a live stream. So you can see live pictures of the race course and you can see which horses are in the stalls, which horses are not in the stalls and you can determine how close the race actually is to starting. So if it gets to five past four, and you know there's one horse in the stalls and all the rest of the horses are just sort of steadily making the way over and there's no urgency for the race to start you know you're not going to be in an absolute crazy mad rush to get all your bets matched on the exchange so that's just a little hack and it will help cool down your nerves when you're getting on extra places knowing that you're not strictly limited to whatever the scheduled post time is and the race could only go off a couple of minutes after the scheduled start time okay so hack number two i like to call the fail safe now the fail safe is like a is literally what it says on the tin it's basically a last resort to get out without uh without taking any of the bets that you were initially hoping to get on so get out for absolutely nothing and get out for a scratch basically now you'll only be able to do this efficiently on some of the higher quality bookmakers like bet365 and skybet to a certain degree and some of the big mainstream bookmakers and basically it relies on the bookmaker let's say bet365 in my example allowing you to cash out after you've backed a horse each way. So as you can see in this video that I'm playing here, I'm backing the horse War Advocate, which has back odds of 41.0, 20 pounds each way. I'm placing my back bet, so you can see I've got a, a back bet placed with a bookmaker, 20 pounds each way at back odds of 41. And as you can see, that is displayed in the My Bets feature of Bet365's website. Now what very well could happen, someone comes in with a massive bet on the exchange and it pushes the price way out, or maybe there's a, a big reason as to why people don't like this horse or why they do like it, and basically the price runs off in a certain direction on the exchange. Now if this happens in the wrong direction for you, this is gonna create a bigger qualifying loss each time the price continues to move out. So as Bet365 are pretty slow at updating their cash out feature, what you can actually do, once you see this happening, and once you see the price move moving out or moving in, whichever way you, you're looking at it, you can actually decide against going for the extra place. So you can look at it and think, ah, oh, there's no longer an opportunity here. The price has moved off too far in one direction on the exchange. I'm just gonna cancel this. I'm gonna scratch this out. I'm gonna try again on a different horse. And the way you can do that is you can just jump to the bookmaker you've got the back bet with. I've got it with Bet365 here. And then you can just click cash out. Now in most cases, you can actually get your full stake back. Sometimes the cash out will be a little bit below the stake that you've used. But in that case, you've just sort of got to weigh it up. Is it better to just cash out for a small loss and take the hit with the bookmaker? Or is it better just to place your win lay bet and your place lay bet and go at it that way? So that's a little hack I like to call the fail safe some mainstream bookmakers are going to be better than the lower quality bookmakers which just give you a terrible margin on the cash out straight away as soon as you place the bet but some of the better bookmakers like bet365 and skybet to a certain degree will give you pretty much the whole cash out 
once you place your bet. And if the price is running away from you on the exchange for whatever reason, you can just decide to scratch your position, cash out with a bookmaker and try again on a different horse. Okay, so this next hack is going to be for people with gubbed accounts or state restricted accounts with bookmakers. So as you probably know, I'm guessing you, you do know if you follow this channel and you're a match better, bookmakers aren't in the business of keeping match betters and people who are urban around for very long. So they figure out you're, you're a match better in your taking value and they'll generally ban you from free bets and they may also restrict the stake that you're allowed to use on your bets. So let's say the bookmaker does this and they restrict us to six pounds or a three pound each way stake. So I'm gonna change the default stake up here to three pounds. I'm gonna refresh the extra place matcher. Now you can see once we've done that, we've got a three pound each way stake on all the selections along the extra place matcher. If we look at the top runner, we can see the qualifying loss is 52p, but the extra place profit is £6.38. Now obviously you're getting that on second, third and fourth, so that might not actually be too bad value, but let's assume that they're only paying out on one extra place. So you can see a 52p qualifying loss for one extra place of £6.38 isn't amazing. So what you can actually do is you can actually get on a horse with higher back odds. So if we look down here at this one, Trop Bay or Bayou, whatever that says there, this has back odds of 26, and if you were to place £3 each way, Backstake with a bookmaker at back odds of 26 and lay using these stakes here. You can see the qualifying loss would be a pound, but the extra place profit would be 17 pounds. Now, obviously, the rating is a little bit short on this one. The rating is 83%. We just make this a little bit of a better rating. Let's put that at 36. You can see that's now a 91% rating, and you can see the value that you would get just from a small each way backstake with a bookmaker on, in this case, a 90% rating. You can see the qualifying loss would be 50p, but the extra place profit would be £17.50. Whereas if we look at the top one, which is also a 90% rating, the qualifying loss is also 50p, but the extra place profit is £6.38. So if you've got gubbed accounts and state restricted accounts, you can still get some good value out of them using horses with higher back odds. Now, of course, the bookmakers, unfortunately, aren't stupid and eventually they'll figure out what you're doing again and then you'll be state restricted to probably about zero. I know this has happened to me quite a lot. I've used this on quite a few gubbed accounts and they've basically just come back and said, right, your max stake is now zero pounds and zero P. Have fun betting on their platform. So you can see they will figure it out eventually, but you can still squeeze out some value even though the accounts have been state restricted. So for this one, this kind of ties into what I was saying on the first hack where the, the races don't always go and play at the scheduled start time. So obviously in this example, the scheduled start time is quarter past five. It's pretty rare that the race actually starts exactly on that time usually it's like a minute or two minutes or three minutes after the scheduled post time before the race actually goes in play now with that knowledge and with actually using the live video as i showed you earlier you'd find the event click on live video and that would load the video up you can actually place bets after post time because the betting if there's a delay for whatever reason continues to occur with the bookmakers websites and the betting exchanges as well now what I've found is some bookmakers get a little bit lazy after post time. So after the scheduled post time, they kind of let their gird down a little bit and you can sometimes squeeze out some decent little herbs on certain runners. So obviously when you get a decent herb, you can hit it pretty hard with a decent sized stake. And that is obviously what you're looking to do. You're trying to get as high a rating as you possibly can for a small qualifying loss and a massive extra place profit if the horse lands in an extra place. Now obviously you do need a little bit of confidence with the process of extra places before you start doing this. So if you are new to extra places or you don't like the variance and you're getting spooked by the price movements on the exchange a little bit too much, I probably won't recommend doing this. It's, it's a little bit more advanced, but if you're fairly comfortable with it and you can stay relaxed and calm and you have a good solid understanding of what you're doing, I would recommend getting on extra places after the scheduled post time if it's applicable. Obviously some races are ready to go at the scheduled post time and it's not applicable and don't do it. Make sure you've got enough time, make sure you're watching the live video. And one final tip, which is very, very important after post time, obviously it's, it's 21 minutes past five here this post time was quarter past five don't click refresh on the extra place matcher because if you click refresh on the extra place matcher it'll actually vanish and it'll move on to the next race so as long as you don't refresh it you can still change all the numbers inside the extra place matcher just just show you what i mean there you can still change all the numbers without it you know without it changing and stuff like that but if you click refresh, it will move on to the next page and then you're going to be in a little bit of trouble scrambling to the each way calculator, trying to, you know, trying to figure out what stakes you need to use and what odds you need to be placing bets at and things like that. So don't refresh it. Use the live video and make sure you're comfortable 
with the process before you use this technique. So those are four hacks that you can apply with the extra place offer. Now if you know of more hacks, feel free to drop them down below in the comments section of this video. And if you wanna see four hacks on the Bet365 Tour offer, click the video on screen now and feel free to watch away. Cheers for watching guys, and I'll see you soon.